The most simple method of balancing equations is the inspection method. Balancing by inspection is a simple method of accounting. Make a table of the elements in the reaction. This reaction contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Step 2. For each element, count the number of atoms on each side of the equation. Don't forget to add together atoms that may appear in more than one compound if they are the same type of atom. Step 3. Add coefficients to balance each element. Be sure that when adding a coefficient, you update your table for each element in the compound that the coefficient was added to. Carbon is already balanced. Placing a 2 in front of water will give 4 hydrogen atoms on the product side. But it will also change the number of oxygen to 4. The hydrogen atom is now balanced. Placing a 2 in front of the O2 molecule on the reactant side changes the number of oxygen atoms on the reactant side. All of the elements are now balanced. Step 4. Check the total charge on each side of the equation. Charges must be balanced as well. There are no charges written on either side of this equation. Therefore, both sides of the equation have a total charge of zero. When each element and the charge are balanced, place a 1 in each empty coefficient location. It's not required by some instructors, but that way you'll know that you finished the problem and not that you left it blank because you weren't sure of how to complete the problem. Often, one of the most frustrating tasks for students as they attempt to balance equation is to know what order to balance the atoms in. Here are some tips to help. Start with the elements that only appear one time on each side of the reaction. There is more than one element that only appears one time. Then balance the elements which are in the most complicated molecules first. Save elements that appear in more than one compound for later. Also, save elements that appear uncombined for last. How does balancing order affect the outcome? According to the suggestion in the previous slide, this equation should be balanced beginning with oxygen, then hydrogen, and saving lead until the end. First, a table of elements is made. The number of atoms on each side of the reaction is determined and added to the table. Remember to add the two lead atoms together even though they are in different compounds. Placing a 2 in front of water changes the oxygen and the hydrogen totals on the product side. This completes the oxygen balancing. Next, we balance hydrogen by placing a 4 in front of H plus on the reactant side. This completes the balancing of hydrogen. Finally, we save lead until the end. Remember, the charges must also be balanced. The reactant side has four H plus one ions. This gives a total charge of plus four. The product side has two plus two ions. This gives a total charge of plus four as well.
The equation is now balanced. But what does it change if you balance in a different order? The initial table will look identical. If you choose to balance the hydrogen first, followed by the oxygen, the hydrogen will become unbalanced. In the process of fixing the oxygen, the hydrogen has become unbalanced again. It must be rebalanced by adding a different coefficient. The lead and the charge can be balanced as in the previous example. The same final answer is determined using this balancing order as it was in the previous slide. However, this balancing order took more time as you had to go back and rebalance the hydrogen. There's nothing wrong with this. It just may save you some time if you can choose a more efficient balancing order. A second example. First, make a table of the elements in the reaction. Second, count the number of each element on each side of the reaction. There's one copper atom on each side. There's one silver on each side. But remember that the fourth step is to check the total charge on each side of the reaction. The reactant side has a total charge of plus 1, while the product side has a total charge of plus 2. This is balanced by adding the coefficient 2 in front of the silver cation. However, this unbalances the silver. Sometimes it's necessary to go back and rebalance an atom after the charge has been balanced. Remember to put a 1 in any empty coefficient blank to indicate that you've completed the problem. The next step appears to have been done already. The atoms are already balanced. Polyatomic ions are a group of atoms that are covalently bonded to each other. They overall have a net charge. For example, ammonium plus 1 or sulfate negative 2. If you can recognize polyatomic ions in a chemical reaction and they appear intact on both sides of the reaction, you can balance them as one chunk together rather than splitting them up into individual elements. In this example, PO4 is intact on both sides of the reaction. It can be balanced as one unit. Here's a hint. If you see OH on one side of the reaction but not on the other, look for water. Water can be rewritten as HOH. This allows you to see the OH polyatomic ion on the other side as well. Count the number of each element or ion on the reactants and product side. Remember not to count the hydrogen in the OH polyatomic ion as it will be counted later. The 4 in PO4 is a part of the polyatomic ion and is not used to count atoms. However, the 2 outside of the parentheses is used to count polyatomic ions. Step 3 is to add coefficients to balance the number of atoms. To balance the phosphate ion, the hydrogen is changed. To balance the hydrogen, the OH polyatomic ion is changed. 
In the process of balancing the OH, you also balance the calcium. Remember to check the total charge on each side as well. Both sides have a neutral charge. And last, place a 1 in any empty blank.